You're listening to the Higher Calling Podcast. I'm Pete Newsom, and this is your source for all things hiring, staffing, and recruiting. I'm joined today once again by Ricky Baez. Ricky, how are you this morning? It's October. I love it. This is my second favorite month of the year. Second favorite. What's your favorite? December. Come on. Christmas. Has to be. Yes. Right? Yes, of course. Look, I'm Puerto Rican. So Coquito, Pacteles, Penin, people who are Puerto Rican understood what I just said. Google it. Trust me. It's worth safe. It's some good stuff during the holidays. Ricky, we usually take a few minutes to get off track, but today we're going we're going right there, right from the start. Right so. through it. But let's get back on track because we're not here to talk about Puerto Rican cuisine or Christmas. We're here to talk about specific techniques for evaluating character and potential. Hiring for soft skills, right? Hiring for soft skills. It, it's the one thing that everyone should feel good about that's going to keep AI and robots from stealing our, our recruiting <laughs> jobs, right? That seems to be the topic. That's right. Yeah, yeah. Little Clippy. Clippy from Microsoft is, is going to take our job one day. Well, the, look, there, there's a lot of things that automation can do. There are a lot of things, of course, as we're all mm -hmm. experiencing right now that AI can do. But one of the things that I don't know how it can ever do is really assess soft skills at a deep level. And, and I think, uh, who knows, I never say never, right? But mm -hmm. this is what differentiates a human recruiter, uh, a good one, from a machine trying to match skills mm -hmm. is what are those soft skills, things that you may be on a resume, but you really have to get a feel for someone in person. So how do you, how do you think of soft skills? Well, how would you define those? I would define it as more of emotional intelligence. How do you deal with other human beings? How do you influence other human beings? A machine is easy. You put in a code, the machine does what the code says. But when it comes to interacting with another human being that you're going to be working with, you need a different particular set of skills for you to be able to get the talents that that person was hired to do. So to me, it's all about the human interaction and how well or not good you use it. That's a great way to phrase it. I mean, it's it to me, it's the whole of who you are, mm -hmm. right? What what is this? Okay, it's great that Ricky has all uh, of the qualifications and background on on his resume to do the job. But is Ricky going to be someone I want to interact with? Is Ricky going to be consistent? Is he going to be agreeable and enjoyable mm -hmm. and motivated and driven and all of these things that you just can't grab from a resume? Right. You have to really see who this person is on the inside. That's right, because on the resume, it shows what you have accomplished. It shows just technical abilities, but it doesn't really show how you accomplish it. It doesn't really show how you deploy those technical abilities. And this is what we're looking to find out when trying to decide a person's soft skills, the how. How do you do this? How do you do that? That's right. So some examples uh, of soft skills, right? Some additional communication. Mm -hmm. teamwork, organizational skills, leadership skills, right? So balance that against the hard skills, which again, are easy to quantify in, in a different way. Your technical abilities, the degree and education that you have, the professional experience that you've been exposed to, the tools that you know how to use. Those are hard skills, much easier to define and, mm -hmm. uh, and quantify on a resume. So what we're talking about really today is how do we how do we recruit for for soft skills how do we pick those things out from one person over another when the resumes and, and professional background look similar but mm -hmm. we know working with person a could be vastly different than working with person b even if they look the same on paper and this is scary pete because i do have students and i do have clients that i coach on this because they focus just on the technical aspect which that's something you need to focus on when you're going out and finding talent obviously they have to meet the minimum qualification but let me paint you this story what if you have 20 engineers and you need 21 all the 20 engineers get along great. And this 21st engineer that you're bringing in, because the previous one retired, right? But you're bringing this one person that got five PhDs, all these credentials, but they don't get along with anybody. They don't know how to communicate with anybody. Yes, on paper, his skill set looks great. But if you bring that person into the organization, you run the risk of messing up the well old machine you already have going just because this person does not know how to get along with other people. And, and it's not a one size fits all thing, right? Mm -hmm. So you can mm -hmm. say, for example, every company who needs to hire someone to do WordPress development, for example, mm -hmm. uh, needs 
uh, to hire someone who has a background and experience and skill in WordPress development, yeah. right? Yeah. But it could be a vastly different position where one uh, need might be for someone to work autonomously, to come up with the ideas from scratch, to just take a project from start to finish and complete it as a solo effort, where in another scenario, as you were describing uh, just a minute ago, you might need someone who works well as a team, who mm -hmm. can fit a very specific role within a bigger picture. Those are very different uh, jobs to hire for, and they're very different people you should hire for those jobs. And that is where soft skills really come into play. Would it be safe to say, Pete, that the higher up you go in an organization, like the more people you have uh, responsibility over, the bigger the soft skills you need to have? Is, uh, I'd is say that the, a fair assessment? I'd say different soft skills, right? Okay. Because that, if you if you consider things like leadership, right? Organizational skills, management, uh, you know, empathy, for example, then, then great. But I don't know that I would use a lot of those words to describe Elon Musk at times, right? <laughs> that's, so, a, that's a good point. <laughs> so, it, you know, no, nobody's higher up than, than he is in the professional okay. world. But I think you, he probably realizes, and I have no idea how, what his you know, management style is really, but I suspect those aren't the kind of things he stops. You know, if we look at being empathetic and 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 cultivate, you know, making sure everyone's feelings aren't hurt and that sort of thing. Those are valuable things for leaders to be able to do in many cases. But I wouldn't be surprised if he has someone else worrying about those details on his team, right? Well, don't you think the way he's acting right now makes the point? It makes the point that that's necessary, right? It, because I think he would have a better follow. Well, I mean, I can't say. I just know what I see on TV. I think he would have a better following and more people who will listen to him with an influential ear. Because right now, I'm I'm venturing to guess people to listen to him with an ear of fear, right? I don't want to lose my job, right? But is there a, is there an influence there? And I think that I, and no, actually, I don't think I know. That's what I meant when you're at the top you have to have a different level of influence to the people below you. Because now, not only do you have to know, uh, be able to talk to the people at the bottom lines, but you also have to talk to the people in the middle, executive leadership, and so on and so forth. And that's why I'm thinking that the soft skills are more prudent at the at the executive level than anywhere else. But but I'll, I'll say as a general statement, sure. But every organization is so different. I wouldn't want to put that in one, you know, I category it. by itself yeah. and, and agree to all of it. Because if you are looking to build a high performance organization, one that's in, intense, think of a you know, Wolf of Wall Street type of you know, scenario almost, right? Then you would want a different kind of leader, a different uh, set of soft skills. So that's really where the basis for this lies is understanding what soft skills are needed in that particular environment and then hire accordingly. Uh, one story that I always think of in a conversation like this is years ago, we had a software developer join a team. It wasn't the, joint, the team of 20 that you described. It was a team of four. This was a fourth person to join. Someone had left for whatever reason. We recruited a candidate into this role, and they all sat in a room together. And on this candidate's first day, he walks in, and the lights are off in the room. And he turned the lights on. One of the other developers went and turned the light off and this went back and forth all day and he called us at the end and he said i don't think i can work here they work in the dark they, they don't communicate with each other nobody interacts so if you were interviewing for that role you should say are you comfortable working in silence even though mm -hmm. you're with other people can you just you know is that a good fit for you and it doesn't it's not a matter of one being better or worse i, I mean most people would say the lights on are better but it was what was needed in that particular situation. So knowing the culture, knowing what soft skills are needed, that to me is, is step one in this process. Especially the culture, right? Because it's, it's, if you're, if you're tasked to hire the next engineer, the next supervisor, the next, the next, whatever for the organization, you, you have just as enough responsibility to make sure the person is, is, it's fits culturally with the, and I mean, 
the organizational culture, not a personal culture. The fits the organization culture the best way possible, the same as the skill set needed to be successful in this role. So the recruiter really has to find that perfect balance of both to mesh as well as possible with the team that they're about to work with. And I'll tell you the the way I took job requirements over the years and would still do today if I were in that mm-hmm. mode like I used to be. And you you needed me to hire someone for you. And you if you were a new manager that I'm working with for the first time, I would spend a little time, enough time on, tell me what you need, Ricky. Hard skills, right? What job do they need to be able to, to accomplish for you? What are the goals and objectives of the role? Of course, I want to know all that. But I'm much more interested in who you need. That's right. Give me the person that's going to be a get good fit. And those soft skills, I would say, matter at some level greater than 50% for most jobs. And Pete, I have to say this because right now for all the HR people listening right now, their heads are exploding. Yes, we are We are going to be fair and concise in who we bring in because in the HR world, Pete, I don't know if you've seen this, this is a big thing as far as being careful and making sure somebody is culturally fit for an organization because then you might start dabbling into illegal water. So that's not what we're saying here. What we're saying here is the minimum qualifications has to be met. Once that is met, then let's take a look at um, the soft skills de- uh, needed to be successful in the role. G- as well. give, give me more from that. Tell me where your concern mm-hmm. lies with, with this. Where, where am well, I making you nervous? Well, well, no, no, not because I because I know what you mean. What it, what it will make other people nervous is if you focus so much on the culturally fit perspective, there could be that you're picking somebody on something that's not a necessary or a needed skill set technically for the role. So if you get if you take your eyes off what is technically necessary for the role, you run the risk of running into other protected areas. What if you take your eyes off that you start figuring out somebody has to be more charismatic, somebody has to have more energy. Right. Let's focus on energy. Right. Because if you want if you're looking for people with just high energy and you focus just on that, chances are you're going to hire people that are younger. Right. And now you just violate ADEA and organization just got in trouble for that. So that's Um, that's an interesting it's an interesting road to go down. And this is off topic, so I don't want to spend much time on it. Sorry. But but that that is an to me, that's conflating things that um, that shouldn't be uh, confused, right? If I need someone with energy, if I if I'm hiring a salesperson, right, I, I want someone who is enthusiastic for you know it, it, they they have an outgoing personality, they're upbeat, they do have energy. I know that's a necessary soft skill. Those are necessary soft skills to 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 be successful in many sales roles. I'm not going to apologize for recruiting for that. Now, if someone wants to say, yeah, but that's potentially discriminating on age, I think that is completely unfounded and not uh, in, in, in one having nothing to do with the, the other. There's a lot of super energetic 80 year olds. There's a lot of lazy 20 year olds, right? <laughs> Agreed. So, Agreed. I, so do you, so tell me where that, you know, back to the, your comment that makes HR people's head explode. Is is it because they're concerned that those things aren't easy to to separate? Um, I guess I'm not completely following. No, no, because 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 here's the thing. Now you're right. That's gonna go nowhere if all of your tools, if 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 you've done everything you you need to do to make sure you bring that person on board. But from a legal perspective, you're gonna spend about twenty grand to prove yourself right. So let's avoid that altogether, right? Avoid that altogether. I'm not saying that that this is going to lead us down that road because, again, you have to have a balance with it, right? And all I'm saying is it's really easy to get away from the technical aspect and focus on things that are not in this, a technical necessity for the job. And you can easily go down that rabbit hole where this organization did. They, this organization wanted to wanted to bring in. Uh, I'm not going to mention the name, but it's all over the uh, news. They wanted to bring in um, all newer employees, and they were all focusing just in Gen Zs, mm. right? Because Gen uh, Zs have a a different point of view when it comes to work. Well, you know who is not a Gen Z? People over forty. <laughs> Right, they they are not Gen Z, and a group of them got together like this is not fair, and they lost twenty million dollars in that lawsuit. So it, it's that case is different, but if all I'm saying is as a recruiter, let's make sure the balance is there. 
focus on the technical aspect, but then just equally as important, you got to focus on the soft skills to have that perfect ingredient in the bowl to make that cake. I had to bring it back to food. Sorry. So if I'm, if I'm, if you're my client and I'm looking to recruit for you, if you're the hiring manager, correct. Um, give me some, some insight then on where you think that, uh, that line becomes you know, too close to being crossed. If I'm saying, all right, Ricky, we, we, you've given me the the technical uh, requirements, the hard skills for the job, right? We'll just continue to use the the example of a software mm -hmm. developer since I brought it up okay. earlier. And I'm like, great. Now let's get into the who you need to hire. Tell me what you know the the soft. Let's talk about the soft skills. Do they need to? Are they going to work as part of a team, or they or are they going to be autonomous? I mean, that's a huge thing to it start is. with. Uh, to to have a bit as a basis for understanding. Now that's that's really important um, to me as a recruiter. Does that make you uncomfortable? You think that no. gets to a dangerous spot? No, it doesn't because because it, it's I'm being I'm being specific as to what we need. Let's say I need two positions, same skill set, same everything. One of them is working by themselves in a room for eight hours, right? An analyst, and the other one works with a group of people. Obviously, the job description. It's going to look the same from a technical perspective, but the soft skills are going to be very different, right? Because I'm not going to care as much for the soft skills of the person who's working in the room by themselves if I'm the only person they need to talk to versus somebody who's got to deal with the rest of the team, has to present in front of executive leadership, and has to talk to our clients, right? That's a completely different set of soft skills that I'm going to need for that second person than I would for the first person. So that this interaction so far, so far so good. Okay. So then where do you, do you, do you, do you have then concerns? Because a uh, you know, part of screening for soft skills is, is you, know, you could uh, get into the world of behavioral interviews. And that's mm -hmm. something that, that I think is important too. Do, do, do you feel that that is also a risky road to go down? No, because we have me as a, as a, uh, as a business owner, I do have to write to, I have to write to make sure that I vet the right person for the right role. If I'm going to pay money on a weekly basis for this person in return for talent, I got to make sure it's the right person. So, so far with behavioral interviews, I want to make sure this guy's not going to smack somebody over the head because the Phillies won. Right. <laughs> that, I want to make sure World Series is going on, folks. In case you haven't heard, Phillies are doing good. Um, it, it, so that's important. That, if you don't do that, if you don't look for that and the guy actually does that beat somebody up, the question is going to be, how how did you check for this in the interview process? Right. Did you check references? Right. So we got to watch ourselves for that as well. Again, I'm saying we need a balance. And yeah. the issue comes into place when you don't look at the uh, the technical skills and you only focus on the uh, culture of fit. That's when you become uh, when you have an issue. So let me make sure we're on the same page. So when the the technical fit to me is the easier of things to assess. Absolutely. Right? So I'm we're not talking about that today because we're assuming that there that match is there, right? Mm -hmm. We're looking to go beyond that. So when I'm thinking of behavioral questions or soft skills, I want to know how you responded uh, to adversity. I want to know how mm -hmm. you managed a project. I want to know how you interacted with the team. These are all the things that I want to find out from you as a candidate to know not just that you're a good fit for the organization, but this organization is a good fit for you. So when I, so I'm going to go the opposite way uh, of, of, of what you said, right? So this will really make your HR head explode, perhaps. I'm going to say you're probably doing everyone a disservice if you don't screen and recruit for soft skills, because Agreed. you don't, you're going to end up with both sides unhappy. Right. So we're, I think we're so afraid at times of of let's not get close to a, a line that could get us sued. Right. I mean, look, no one it, it, we're not going to discriminate against anyone. We're not going to get anywhere near talking about protected classes. To me, that is such a far cry from what we're talking about. So I, I it catches my attention. And so we're a little off topic when the, there's a red flag thrown up for, for that kind of um, uh, thinking, because I think, no, 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 now we're just now, now we're, we're bringing something unnecessary into the conversation. Well, 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 Pete, that's what makes this, this, what you and I have, you're such a great team, right? I don't want you thinking about that. 
I want you thinking about bringing the next, the best person on board. If you focus on that, me as as HR, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna equate this to a car. Okay, I'm it's it, you're you're trying to get to Miami and you're going 180 miles an hour. I'm and I'm I'm here to tell you I want you to get to Miami, but go go the speed limit, right? That's all I'm saying, right? You focus on driving to your destination. I, it, it, for example, you focus on bringing the best person on board, and I will focus to make sure that we do this in a way that it minimizes legal liability. That's why this is such a great team, and that 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 is all I'm saying is that my concern only comes into play when the technical abilities or the technical skill set are not looked at. But I know you and I assume that that is looked at, but I, I guarantee you, people listening right now, they're like, oh. God, you can't do it. No, wait a minute. We have we have to balance it. If we balance it, you're going to be okay. Understood. Fair enough. So we're we're not we're not discriminating, but we are drilling down to the things that, that that's right matter, right? So that's let right. me go to another area of of assessment for for okay. soft skills, psychometric testing. What what's your general take on that? Um, yeah, I know there's a lot of organizations that are completely bought into the concept. There's others that never consider doing it. And what we're we're talking about with that is if skills testing, aptitude testing, personality testing to see if you are a good fit for the role. Now, if anything, to me at times when I see this taking place, I think, oh boy, that's 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 letting you know, we're back to letting a robot of sorts, right? Yeah. Make a decision. But um what what's your take on uh, on the value of that and how it comes into play in interviewing? I, I value those kinds of testings only if it's used as a tool to make a, 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 a decision with it to bring somebody on board, not if it's the only deciding factor. It has to be in a plate full of other tools to help make a suggestion of whether the person should be brought on board. Right. So I agree because then I look, I know it's I'm I'm willing to guess some of the most famous serial killers that America or the world knows were freaking geniuses, <laughs> right? Because it, it, it's the IQ was high. They just have this this little fix that needs to be, you know, this itch that needs to be scratched. What I'm saying is, is that um from an HR perspective or a leadership perspective, I'm perfectly okay with that, only if it's used as a tool. Uh, combined with other tools to help the human being make a decision, then I'm okay with it. Got it. Okay, fair enough. So let me let me ask you. This is a little bit once again off topic, but it's something that I've noticed a, a lot on LinkedIn lately. Comments being made about companies that ask their uh, candidates to do projects, to do work, and we've had that come up at times over the years with a client asking for a creative position, for example asking someone to show you know, do do a little a little project. Now it's one thing if it takes a very short time, but some of these examples I've seen on LinkedIn are companies asking candidates to spend hours and hours doing something without compensating them for it. I'm not a fan of that at all. I'm not a fan I think of that. That's yeah. a, I don't think that's appropriate. Um but do you see that as a as a danger zone at all? I don't know why we're going danger zone today. But, not, not, <laughs> uh, that's where we, we need are. Kenny Loggins. Kenny Loggins playing. Um, no, look, uh, it, I I don't see that as a legal issue. I do see that as the best way, the best way to push your best candidates out of the runnings. Your best candidates are not going to have time for that. They're not going to have time for that. They're going to go to where people respect their time. Right. And 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 really get down to what really brass tack, what needs to happen for the person to be hired. You know who's going to stick around with you to go through that test to make sure they got the job? The people who have no chance anywhere else. <laughs> so from my perspective, if you can do it in 10 minutes and in 10 minutes, you can you can determine the candidate's technical skills. By all means, go for it. Couple of hours. No, you're going to push your best people away. Yeah, I think that's I think that's a great way to put it. Um, yep. And that's for that reason alone, it's a dangerous road to go down. Yeah. And it's really, I, you know, it's also a bit of a disrespectful thing at times to to the individual. But if a company's willing to compensate for the time at the at, at an hourly rate, I think that's appropriate. If if you really need mm -hmm. to see that work to make an assessment, it could be a win win if someone's otherwise not employed. And I'll give you a real world example of how I've. Uh, done that is when we hire freelancers for for project work then um you know i ask them to give me a sample you know let's mm -hmm. let's start with one uh, small project now yep. i'm going to pay you for it at your at your hourly rate but it's a way of finding out whether there's a good fit 
in you know, real time, right? Real world with something that I will be asking you to do um, at scale. Let's do it a, 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 in a small sample and see see how how your quality was, right? Perfectly and so, okay. So yeah. I I do that pretty regularly on the freelance side, but always always compensating the individual for it. Well, you know who does that a lot? The labor market, right? Well, trades, welders, right? I've helped an organization recruit a welder and I love their process. They have two pieces of iron or steel and they're like, hey, weld this together. You know, they they have all the tools there. All the tools are there, right? right? And they and they know how to turn things on, put and you just let them do it safely. Again, that takes 20 minutes. That's perfect. Why not put them through that so you can see what they can do? Absolutely. Okay. So we're talking about techniques to evaluate these soft skills, right? Mm -hmm. Group interviews. Group interviews. Now I'm not talking panel interviews. That's no, different. I, I know what you Maybe mean. Maybe we can talk about <laughs> these things together, you know, separately. Yeah. Group interview. Hey, you're one of three candidates five candidates. Let's sit you down all together and, and see how you react. I think that's weird. I, I, I don't, uh, I, it's not something we encounter, uh, rarely, if ever, yeah. do we encounter that, uh, in our staffing world? What, what's your take on group interviews? If I'm looking for somebody, a salesperson who I need this person to command the group of people to convince other people to go the other way, I would love to do a group interview. Because I'll put a lot of A players together, right? And and we'll see who comes out on top. We'll see who's the one who's going to sway somebody from one place to the other. From a sales perspective, that is awesome. That is excellent, right? Because what happens is somebody has all the schooling, all the certification. Because remember, schooling and education is just proof that you have the education. You want to see proof that they can use it. Right. right. So if if you have somebody in that group that's an introvert, doesn't talk, it's afraid to talk to people, you're not going to put them in a sales position. So they're going to fail regardless of what kind of credentials they have. So for that example, I would do that. And I would as a as a professional salesperson, which mm -hmm. I've been uh, for most of my career, I would argue that um, you're going to lose the A players in that scenario, too. You think yeah. so? Yeah, no way. I'm I'm playing that game with someone. <laughs> I, I know okay. I, I just, it's not going to happen. Uh, yeah. I don't mind a panel interview. Go ahead. Yeah. Line everyone up. Give me your best. Let's see, you know, see how I stand up in that situation. I think that's a much more uh, relevant way to assess how someone's going to do than to put them in a completely unnatural environment. That's not in my opinion, a true assessment of how they'll do in their job. It's just, you know, it's just almost mean. I don't know. I just, I had, <laughs> How is that? That's not mean. Just, How is that mean? You know, it's, it's, again, it's, it's, I think it's a, I think it's a bit of a disrespectful approach. And I, that's just my own take. I'm not yeah, like, yeah. fundamentally, uh, you know, opposed to it happening. I just, I don't think that's the best way to treat individuals who are interviewing for a role um, to put them in a cattle call situation and, and, and line them up. Um, you know, it's just not, it's just not what I would want to subject someone to. And I'll tell you, I, maybe that's just my own personal take. I draw the line there. I wouldn't subject myself to that either. Mm. I'd say, Hey, look, you don't, you don't, you don't, you know, I'm just, I, 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 res I have too much um, respect for my own ability to, to, to subject myself to that. So fair enough. I mean, I, I've, I've done that as Sears in the past, and we've it's we've got it down to 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 the point that we knew the type of person we needed to hire. And we got long story short, we knew we needed um used car salesmen because they had the best gift of no, seriously, they have the best gift of gab. They can talk to anybody and sell them anything. And the best way for us to see how that skill set come out, put them in a group of people. And have them talk about a blender, and then see what happens with this blender, right? It's a, it's it worked out great. Yeah, but I get it, what you're saying. It's so look. So sometimes interviewing, adding some gimmicky things to it like that, right? Sell me a pencil. It's a different style. It's a different yeah. approach. It's not one that I've subscribed to. Um, be, you know, because I I just I you don't you're not hiring me to sell a pencil. Right. You're hiring me to build relationships, to build rapport, to be to understand what someone finds valuable and then be able to apply our solution to it. That that's what you're hiring me to do. And I don't think those situations are necessarily good breeding grounds for it. But I'm thinking we're talking just from a sales perspective. Maybe there's other there's other um, 
group interview scenarios that would make more sense. None of them immediately come to mind. I just haven't encountered it that much either. Mm -hmm. Thankfully. Now, now here's the thing, Pete. Now, and if, if from a recruiter's perspective, if you really want to find out who that person is, is you have to ask, you do have to ask those behavioral questions, but instead of asking, Hey, how would you handle X situation, which anybody can make up? The best thing a recruiter can do is to ask the candidate to give you an example of a situation that a happened and how to be you, the, the, uh, the candidate respond to it. Right now, is there a possibility they could lie? Yeah, there is, right? There's a small possibility that they can get some good lies in there. But the majority of the time, you're going to get people's real responses because they believe that's the real thing they have to say. And sometimes they say the right things on how they handle it. You know, they were really diplomatic about it. They, they, they try to understand people's rationale. Now you start to see the interpersonal skills. You start to see how this person handles people who disagree with them. And the and especially in situations where everybody's violating policy, how do you stand up to call everybody out on that? All those, right. those are questions you need to ask. So here's a question for you. you, yeah. so you a candidate is asked a question like that, a situational question, and they mm -hmm. And they make up. You said they could. They, they're probably going to lie. Or if, so the possibility is there. The possibility. Are you there. okay with that? If it satisfied the ultimate goal of the candidate to get the job offer, right? Are you okay if they gave you a lie, which was the right answer to the question, versus giving you a poor answer to the question, which was the truth? Because yeah, what's your take on that? My what take is my my. No, no. I'll tell you. I'll tell you. My take on that is that if you tell me a good story on how you will handle something, that's even worse because that means you're telling me you know how to do it. You know what needs to be done, but I want evidence that you did it, right? Okay, I want that, evidence that, yeah. Right, but <laughs> I, I, think, I think in so many cases when these interview questions arise and the candidate is not prepared for them. So on, um, on Zengig, our, our career advice site, we have – a list of common interview questions that it could be asked for any job title. We have 70 of them, 70 of them with an explanation for how to answer what the interviewer is looking for. Here's some, you know, here, here's the approach you should take 70. That's a big number. <laughs> it is. Those, are the, those are the most, you know, quote, most common. So even though every candidate should go there and read through them to prepare for an interview, there's going to be 71 or 72 or 73 that are just out of left field, right? Yeah. The, the, you know, sell me the pencil type thing and all, and all of those, or here's a, a, a manhole cover. What was some Microsoft question that I used to see all the time from years ago. It's a round mail manhole cover and a square hole. How do you make it fit or something like that? Like, and I, I know I'll these quit. questions are asked with a good, with good intentions, but just because a candidate isn't prepared for your obscure question doesn't mean they're not great. And so I would, you know, just expect that the more you kind of ask people to stretch the, 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 the farther away you're getting from reality and, and like, I keep staying, stay in your lane generally mm -hmm. is how I, I feel. Don't, don't ask people to make up weird stories um, or to, to come up with scenarios that they, you know, they hadn't thought of ahead of time or, or uh, you're given any. Well, relevant. I'm not looking for people to make things up. I'm looking for experiences and, if you don't have an experience and you can't give me one, I mean, what else am I going to go off of? Right. So, all right. So you just showed to me that you don't have experience in handling this kinds of issue. I cannot make a determination. I'm, I'm not going to say this, but I'm not going to make a determination on whether you're going to be a good fit for this organization or not. Well, as Next. long as it's relevant to the organization, right? <laughs> that, correct. That's where it's got to be relevant. That, yes. So the point I, I was making with that is don't get cute. Don't get too cute yeah, yeah, yeah. because yeah. you, you like putting people on the spot and seeing how they respond. That's not, that shouldn't be the goal. AT&T uh, used to interview. do that. Yeah. Yeah, AT&T used to do that. They had this whole thing back in the day, not now, where they will look at how you sat, whether you cross your arms, whether you cross your feet under the desk. They will look under the desk. And I, I was witness to this. And I'm like, why are you looking for that? Because somebody told them that all these behavior cues would give you an indication on how that person is going to be at work. And that, that I do not subscribe to. It's Because, look, I can be like this. You know, for for people not watching, I'm folding my hands, looking stand office. But sometimes, to me, this is how I listen the best. <laughs> so it depends on the person. Yeah. So and my I'm my ankles are crossed right now. I don't know if that's a problem. <laughs> I don't know what that's a sign oh, of. That explains a lot, Pete. Need, it explains yeah. a lot. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. Um. So 
here's what I do think is universally a great idea is to mm -hmm. ask professional references how the, the candidate handled yep. those specific situations. And that's a great way to assess soft skills. Um, oh. Because you're you're not looking it, in and let me just close what we were talking about before by just adding there's a lot of people who just don't interview well, right? And that's where I I, I think even even great salespeople may not be great in that situation. So always consider that too, right? Um, whether you're you're trying to force a situation or really get to the answer, I think the best way in, to get to the answer beyond the resume beyond our in-person interactions is to find out how you handled these scenarios in the past by asking the person you reported to in the past. Isn't you, you said something that caught my attention. Isn't the, the idea of not interviewing well, that in itself gives you a glimpse into how that person's soft skills are. Uh, yes. To, if you, if, if you're, you're measuring soft skills, like uh, performing under pressure, yeah. Handling adversity. That's where you have to look at the specific job, I think. So we we you mentioned a sales job before. Okay, yeah, a salesperson does need to be able to think on their feet, respond, adapt. You ask me a question with something I've never experienced. That's why my mind goes, well, I'm going to give you an answer. I'm going to give you an answer that you want because I'm a salesperson. That's mm -hmm. I'm I'm trying to get to the I'm trying to close this sale. And in this particular scenario, that's you extending an offer to me. So I'm not going to completely fabricate something, but I'm going to put a spin on it that leads down the path that we're trying, I'm trying to take you down. So in, in that interview scenario, great. So yes, if I'm if you're interviewing a salesperson and they don't respond well to a tough question, you should consider whether they're they're right for mm -hmm. sales. If you're interviewing an accountant or a web developer who doesn't respond well to, hey, let me trick you with this question and really make you stretch and think. Um, yeah. I, I think you're doing the the situation and the individual and yourself a disservice. That that's really where well, maybe I didn't make that point clearly enough. So, to the degree that it fits the, the the need, yes, interview for those things. But I would rather interview my software. I'm gonna ask a different set of questions with my software developer than I am with my salesperson. Agreed. Yeah, it, it, and and that's why it's important for the recruiter to not just have one approach. You need to have an approach that matches A, the job description, and B, the person you're looking for to fit that team, right? And you build your questions, you build your entire interview process around those two factors, you're gonna end up finding the right person for the team. But again, that balance has to be there. Going back to, to that accountant, yes, you're right. I'm not gonna ask all these soft skills questions, but here's what I am gonna say. Hey, here's a spreadsheet with a bunch of numbers. Tell me a story. Yeah, and we got here in a roundabout way, but this is this really makes the point that uh, got us off track in the first place with the heads exploding. Is when I say who you need, it's dependent on the role that they're going to play. Yep. And so I want to know I need someone who can think well on their feet, right? I need someone who can deal with adversity constantly. Okay, well. I need to I need to screen for those things versus I need someone who can stare at numbers for an extended period of time and not interact with other humans, right? That that's what I'm trying to get to with the soft yep. skills. So as far as evaluating on soft skills, Ricky, where do you land? How important? I, is it? Oh, I I am big on it. I am big on it. Um, I uh I am on this WhatsApp chat group with other HR pros, and we help each other out with different situations. Out of five of us on there, I'm the only one who I I, I recruit for minimum qualifications, and then the rest is attitude, right? It, it, it's everybody's like Ricky. That I'm look. I'm more risk, uh, not at first, but I'm more. I lean on a uh, on the edge more when it comes to that because I feel that's important. I feel how people. If you're gonna spend at least one third of your day with these folks, you have to have some kind of communication skills and interpersonal skills. And if I have a great team, I'm not gonna ruin it with somebody who's a stick in the mud. That's just not gonna happen, right? So where 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 I'm at, a hundred percent. We got to look for soft skills, and a hundred percent, you have to look for the uh, for the uh, minimal qualifications. You blend those together. There's your candidate. Perfect. And I think that's a that's that's how we should wrap up and be aware of the of, of the situation, be conscious of it, but uh, but also yeah, 
think through think through anything you're saying when you're having a candid conversation without without question, right? That's true. That's right. All right. Well, thanks for listening today, Ricky. Thank you as always, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you, folks. Have a good one. We're due for Q and A, are we not? We are Q and A. We are. All it. right. That's next coming time. up. Okay. All bye. Right.